This one-click Flux LoRa training is stunning. Hello my friends and how are you doing? Today I want to show you something that I'm pretty proud of because I worked very hard for it and I also want to show you some amazing tricks throughout this video on how you can get way more out of your Flux LoRa. But first of all, this is a sponsored video, but I had to do some hard slapping to get the functions onto the page I wanted to have for you. This includes that you can download the LoRa that you have trained, the prices are lower, lower that you have control net for Flux, that you have in painting for Flux, all that good stuff that I said, it has to be part of that page. So I'm going to show you all of that and it works fantastic. Let's look at some examples first. So here you have some really cool results. This is not a training image. This is what has been created by the Flux LoRa trained on my face. And I've never seen anything that looks as much as me as these images. Here we have another example and I could basically become an AI influencer pretending to travel the world and do the most adventurous stuff because it just looks like me and it just looks like a photo. Here's another example in the mountains. Check that out. This even has this kind of wave that my beard is doing when it's getting longer and also the jacket that I often wear. I'm really impressed on how much that looks like me. Here's another one, the Arctic Explorer. Pretty cool image. Really like that. But we also have here the business version. I'm never going to look like that, to be honest. I don't like to wear suits, but it looks pretty good, to be honest. If this is the alternative reality of me, I'm okay with that look. Here we have also the surfer dude. I'm kind of missing out actually on a lot of cool action. And by the way, I'm super surprised that it's actually got my chest hair, right? Even though it doesn't even know what that looks like. Again, this really looks like a GoPro video of me doing some amazing surfing. And here we have artistic style images also of me. This is with some tricks that I want to show you on how you get a very flexible Flux LoRa because the problem with Flux LoRa's is they are very sticky to the images you have trained them on. They are very precise in what they do, but they are not very broad in the range of what they can create. So I figured out a trick for you how you can get a very wide range that is pretty amazing. So here we have some other examples. This one is a little bit more goofy, but I'm super okay with that because it's a Pixar style. It has to be cute. And here we have a pencil sketch or a line art drawing that also looks really fantastic. I love the artistic expression here. And next we have here two different images, two different methods that I also want to show you on how you can create results like that. Now the left version looks more like a 3D model with the actual 3D kind of style. The right one has more of a photographic style, even though it is 3D, especially when you look at the beard hair detail. And here we also have another artistic style that looks pretty cool and actually like a painting again also from that Laura. You can, by the way, also train styles. So here I have a comparison between the input designs that are downloaded from FreePick and the images generated by that Flux LoRa. Again, pretty stunning results and super easy. Now, in case you're wondering why I am so impressed with all of that, well, this is a comparison between my real face and the image created by the Flux LoRa. In the middle, you can see here, this is the photo that I used as a training input. And then on the outside, on both sides, this is what the Flux model has generated. As you can see here, the details are stunning. It is exactly my eyebrows as they are from the shape. Here you can have this like overhanging bone I have on both sides above my eyes. And again, it has the correct shape for that. Also the beard here that I often don't really shave off exactly as it looks on my face. Also the ear, how it stands a little bit off, but it's pretty close to the head. And even these short hairs here that I often don't really shave off really, really looks like my actual head. Super impressed by that. 
Now the page that is having this simplified and very exact process is open art and it's super easy to use. You go on the website, on the left you can see here models and then here you have train my own model. You click on that and this is going to bring you to this page. Now here you can select between the style, the character, face and object. Of course in this case we want to train a face so we click on that. You want to give the name of the model and then upload images. It says here between 4 and 500. You don't really need 500 images. You're good with between 4 and 8 images. And then already you can click here on train your model. Just takes a little bit and then the model is already done. This is how easy that is. After that on the right side you have here the different models you have trained and they are private. You can also publish them if you choose to if you find something that you want to share with the world and of course another thing is you can also download it. This is a function I really fought for because I think that is super important. Now to download the models you have to mouse over the image and here you have these three little dots. Click on them and then here you have download model and then you can just use it in any kind of local environment. Now when you click on download it's giving you this kind of warning here. This is just because OpenArt has a lot of casual users who don't use any kind of local environment like ConfUI or ForgeUI. So they might be confused and think that the model is a software or something like that. So you can ignore that warning. Just download the model and use it like a normal LoRa with Flux. Let me also quickly show you the images I used for the training. Now surprisingly there is not many images of me even though I I'm constantly in front of a camera. I don't do a lot of selfies. So these are the kind of images and one thing I would suggest to you is don't have extreme face expressions because this can irritate the model training and make your face look kind of strange. So more timid face expressions gives a clearer better face that looks more like you. Now the question is how do you get more artistic style into the LoRa? The way I did that is by throwing in some artistic images of yourself. Now the way you can do that is that you go on open art and you create with an SDXL model and a face reference images of you in different styles. For example here this looks pretty good. You can actually use it like that if you want to. The only thing is SDXL has way less details and because of that it also looks less details. So I have created this image here. I have also created this image here more in kind of like a Pixar style or that image here that has more of this kind of anime style. Now here I want to point out something that is really important. You can see in this image that the person has a really muscular body and this can be a problem because when you use that for the flux training you will end up afterwards with images of yourself with a very muscular body because like I said flux training is very sticky to the input images. So try to avoid that so that you actually get your real body shape. So rather create a lot of other images with different prompt variations that suppress this really muscular body. So to have more artistic style in your flux LoRa simply throw in a couple of images, not too many. I would say if you have five photos of yourself, throw in two or three style images like paintings, drawing, graffiti, this kind of thing that looks like you to also give a training, but make sure it actually looks close to how you look. Now to use the model, it's pretty easy. You just click here on create and this is bringing you to the create page. Now here on the left side you can set all of the settings you want to do. So for example you have here the model weight which is selected for you at 0.8 but you can play around with that. Below that we have the prompt and when we go a little bit deeper for example here we have image guidance. This is one of the tricks that I'm using. I'm going to show you in a second what that does and then Below that you also have the output size here and of course the create button with the amount of images you want to create for that. So let's talk about the reference image here and as you can see I have this cute character with the dungarees on and I use that as an image to image reference. In this case 
I do have my Flux Lora with the artistic style, so I actually wouldn't need that. The, the reason why I'm using that is because I want to have this exact composition with these exact colors for the output image, but in my own style as an image that looks like me. I have a quick description here, 3D cute render of a bald bearded man in dungarees. And when we go back down here, you can see for the creativity level, I have 0 0.9, which means I give a lot of freedom to the Flux Lora to make the style of my face and the pixel style I want to have. And as you can see, this is the output. It looks fantastic. And one thing to point out here is that the beard looks like a 3D beard, not like a photo beard. This is an important detail. The reason why this is an important detail is this image here. Because when you look here, it looks a lot more realistic from the fabric of the dungarees, but also from the beard here, which is more photographic and less like a pixel style 3D model. Now, the way I did this here is that I used the Flux model that I trained only on photos. And here, when we go down to the image to image reference, you can see that the creativity level in this case is pretty similar. So I give a lot of freedom to it. But the reason why you actually need that is because if you let less creativity for the model, the image is not going to look like you. And there you have that big problem that either you can have something that looks realistic, like the beard hair, or you can have something that looks like the Pixar style, but doesn't really look like you. And this is why I prefer to throw in a little bit of these stylistic images into the model training to open it up and give it more freedom. Now let's talk a little bit about the rest of the user interface because open art has a lot of functionality that you can use to get more out of your images. First of all, on the right side, you can see we have upscale. When you click on this, you have a pop down menu with different options in here. Now, one thing I want to point out here, and this is going to be fixed in the future. I'm just saying it here because of how it works right now is when you have this upscaling plus the face, it will improve the face detail. However, if the face is too big in the image, it can give you strange double eyes. So maybe avoid that and use just the 4x upscale without the face improvement. It also gives you a really good quality. Other functions you have here are listed on the top. For example, you have in painting, you can remove objects, you can expand the image to the sides, you can have here stylization, so basically a style transfer, you can have a background, you can have a background change, which is pretty cool because it basically removes the background you have right now and puts another background behind that. So if you like the image of you, but you think the background should look a little bit different, this is the way to go. And then we have also this function here for face expressions, which is a little bit hit and miss. I wasn't 100% uh, convinced by that, but it's a kind of interesting thing to play around with. Now, one very important thing to point out here is if you use any of these functions, don't upscale the image beforehand because the image that results from these techniques is going to be a lower resolution image, not the upscaled image. So first do the in painting or the expansion of the image and then upscale it afterwards. By the way, one more thing down here, you also have the ultimate upscale and that gives you a very nice quality. However, it is not ideal for photos. It is better for digital paintings. Overall, I was super impressed by the quality of the Loras and I'm really happy Happy, I could fight out the functions I wanted to have for you on that page. And this, of course, is especially useful for people who don't have the hardware to run Flux or train Flux Loras. Let me know in the comments what you think. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.